Detailing the working lives of the people of Saskatoon, Saskatoon Works celebrates local employment and employers. These photos exemplify the communal effort and solidarity among Saskatoon's workers, as well as the pride and commitment we have for our work. In a province that has seen so many firsts in labour standards and movements, it comes as no surprise that this solidarity exists. Through boom and bust, the Depression and the World Wars, Saskatonians have been a devoted part of the labour scene in this province. Union history here has been a colourful and at times discouraging endeavour, involving many firsts and in some respects has paved the way for the rest of the country's workers. Although the majority of these photos celebrate the working lives of Saskatonians, we must keep in mind the hard work and struggles that have also happened over the years to secure our labour force. The struggles of Saskatonians and in fact Saskatchewanians, have made it possible for women to work and win pay equity, the 40-hour work week, and workers' rights, and among many other contributions. These pictures celebrate the accomplishments of ordinary heroes that were part of some of the greatest moments in our history. Workers in overalls load bags of flour onto a rail car at the Robin Hood flour mill. By 1966, some years after this photograph was taken, about 3,000 carloads of flour were shipped from the mill annually. Workers clamber up ladders and scaffolding on the Besbra Hotel's uppermost turret. 21st Street is lined with automobiles, and the contractor's sign reading Smith Brothers and Wilson is in the foreground. When this photo was taken in October 1931, the hotel was almost complete, but tough economic times delayed its opening until 1935. Workers pack quick Quaker oats at the Quaker Oats plant. The plant was at Avenue N and 18th Street for 60 years, originally built by Saskatoon Milling and Elevator Company in 1906. It shut down in 1972. Kitchen workers at the Besbra Hotel in March 1949. In the foreground is the chef at the time, Mr. Schmitz. The kitchens of the Besbro could prepare some 1,500 meals a day. Workers at the University of Saskatchewan clean freshly shorn sheep wool to prepare it for sorting and grading. The wire mesh tables allowed clumps of dirt and manure to fall to the floor. The composing room at the Star Phoenix in 1942 or 1943. Sam Campbell and Bryce Bowen may be two of the liner type operators at right. Eric Iveson does page makeup in the left background. Workers in the sausage kitchen at Intercontinental Packers in the late 1940s use an air-powered buffalo stuffer to stuff casings with bologna sausage. Women at Waldman and Paul, a local clothing manufacturer on Alberta Avenue. Many immigrant women worked for this company where, as the clutter and overcrowding evident in this 1951 photo suggest, working conditions were less than ideal. Long-distance operators at Sasktel Saskatoon Toll Room in the late 1950s. By the early 1990s, cord boards such as those shown here were being used only by mobile operators, while long-distance operators worked at computer workstations.
A smiling car hop makes change at the Dog and Suds on 8th Street in 1960. During the 50s and 60s, car hops were an integral component of Saskatoon's teen scene, cruising 8th Street. You could turn on your car lights and a car hop would come and take your order. That pastime indoors, though intercoms and drive throughs have replaced the car hops. Construction workers carve Victoria Avenue out of the hill between the traffic bridge and 11th Street. By December 1911, concrete retaining walls shored up the hill on both sides. Dugabar men and women in tandem from the Blaine Lake District haul a load of wheat to Rostern for grissing. Human power was sometimes used by that community if they lacked the financial resources to buy horses or oxen. Workers pose inside the partly constructed Knox Church on Spadina Crescent. Construction began on October 17, 1912, and the church was officially opened on May 3, 1914. The debt for the construction and furnishings was not paid off until 1955. Workers pose on a partly constructed building. The Great Western Furniture sign on the right background places the building in downtown Saskatoon. The pipes in the foreground suggest that the photo was taken in 1912, the year the city planned to install 14 miles of sewer and water lines to keep up with the building boom. Excavating the basement for the Eaton store, later the Army and Navy, at 3rd Avenue and 21st Street. Begun in March 1928, the excavation was the largest in Saskatoon's history. It took 100 workers, 40 horse teams, and one caterpillar shovel a month to complete. The building is now occupied by the Saskatoon Board of Education. Twenty-five women dressed in white uniforms pose in front of a sign that advertises permanent waves. A man in a suit and fitted lace boots sits in the front row. La Belle Beauty Clinic opened its doors in Saskatoon in 1931 under the ownership of Mrs. T. M. Geiter. It was first operated as a school of beauty culture as well as a professional salon. Courses were offered in shampooing, rinsing, drying, finger marcel and crokinole marcel waving, eyebrow arching and shaping, as well as bleaching, dyeing, and hair cutting. The Canadian Pacific Bridge under construction in 1907. A crew of 60 men worked at the site in August 1907 some hastily erecting a temporary wooden pile bridge for the fall harvest, others pouring the massive concrete piers for the permanent structure. Youthful employees of the Capitol Theatre line up at the back door. The Capitol opened on May 11, 1929, and employed many staff to serve its large clientele, the theatre capacity was 1,561. The two gentlemen wearing long, dark coats are manager Carl Ewell, left, and his assistant manager Reg Plum. Metal workers at John East Ironworks pour molten metal into a mould. This photograph was probably taken shortly after John East arrived in Saskatoon in 1910 and built his one-room foundry on Avenue C, where years later the ironworks plant covered an acre of land.
Horses and teamsters working for Jackson the Building Mover haul a house east along 33rd Street about 1916. The whole outfit paused and posed at Avenue A so that the lineman could loosen that telephone wire to allow the house to pass underneath. Proprietor W. W. Jackson and his son Harvey are on the roof. Seven women seated at desks with typewriters and other office equipment in 1945. The financial adjusters is the sign on the window. The Professional Services Bureau and the financial adjusters were located on the fourth floor of the Burks Building. Railway workers ice a train around 1930. Huge blocks of ice were harvested from the river, stored in the railway warehouses, and later used to cool refrigerator cars and the drinking water in passenger coaches. Behind the scenes during then Princess Elizabeth's visit to Saskatoon in 1951. Railway workers serviced CNG steam engine number 6049 that pulled the train this princess used during her cross-Canada tour. A threshing crew at the Henry Cush homestead in 1905. The homestead, owned by the son of one of Saskatoon's pioneer families, was near the present-day Saskatoon Airport. A road crew lays asphalt on 2nd Avenue at 20th Street in 1912. Tracks for Saskatoon Street Railway, which had its inaugural run on January 1, 1913, were put down at the same time. Men and women ironing and sewing at Arthur Rose Dry Cleaners. Arthur Rose himself is standing near the door. With the downtown skyline prominent in the background, men play steel and pour concrete on Broadway Bridge a few months before its official opening in November 1932. Beginning on December 31, 1931, a total of 1,593 men worked around the clock to build it at 45 cents an hour. There were at least 200 men employed on the bridge at a time. Men marching in the Labor Day Parade on 21st Street, passing the Canadian Bank of Commerce and the Drinko Building at 2nd Avenue, crowds lining the street. The 1909 parade was the first of its kind in the city and involved the participation of most of the local unions. We hope you enjoyed this adaptation of Saskatoon Works. The original show was held from February 8th to 28th, 1991. We invite you to visit Local History the next time you're at the Francis Morrison Central Library.